Welcome fellow masters to FGO's annual lottery event. This will be the first lottery event for the year with the next one being around Christmas time. Don't ask me why lasagna puts the two most time consuming events within three months of each other. Well, at the end of the day, this is still a lottery event. So just do what you normally do. Get a ton of the event CE to farm more tickets, to roll the lottery more, to get more resources. So yeah, here's both the grand prize pool and the usual prize pool for the lottery. And heads up, hero proofs and unlucky bones are used very, very often. You may have also noticed on the lottery list, these plushies. You will be able to use these at the shop to purchase the command codes and some other mats. Once you clear out the shop, you can use them as a great source of QP. The bronze, silver, and gold currency for this event is bronze, silver, and gold coins. Wow, how convenient. And here's what you can purchase in the store. Standard stuff. And heads up, some of the newer mats that are not farmable is available. So pick those up when you can. But who gives a shit about all that? You want to know what's really the most important thing in the shop? Behold. Pyom, pyom. Pyom, pyom, pyom. Yes. Perfect. All right, let's talk about the stages now. This lottery event will be releasing stages in three batches, each one with six stages. Now your main goal for the event is to farm as many tickets as you can. So after you're done clearing the shop, you will be mainly prioritizing the last two types of stages, Hero and Legend. They both drop the most amount of tickets, but the Legend stage also drops the other three currencies as well. Look at these Hero stages. Very clean. Three enemies per wave. Just what you need for an easy loop. But now look at this shit. Do you see this? 212-132-112. Yeah, good luck looping that. Thankfully, Lasagna threw us a bone and gave bonus damage to everyone, with lower rarity servants getting a bigger boost. However, for the sake of your sanity, just farm the hero stages for the tickets. Cause the legend stages are just way too much of a hassle. If you have the right team comps and can farm them easily, go for it. But don't force yourself to do it. Cause not only should you be efficient with your stamina, but you should also be efficient with your time. Now if you really want to do the level 90 plus stages, I put a spreadsheet from reddit in the description below which should provide 3 turn comps that you can use. But now, here's the hypest part of the video. Seize! That's about all the hype I could build for this section. Like always, the 3, 4, and 5 star Cs will increase the bronze, silver, and gold currencies. Nothing really much to talk about here, except for this one. True Crimson Spear Trainer, which seems really familiar. It's pretty much identical to the 5 star C from Oku that we literally just had, but a bit more specific for a better boost. Also, in regards to the 4 star C, I really really hope they keep the name of it as fucking Hell's Kitchen. So the CE that you're actually going to care about and going to see a lot of is the Ticket CE wearing our hearts on our sleeves. It gets Buster Up and Guts and that's it. This time around there's nothing besides the Buster Up to really help you with your farming. Which is pretty bad considering your farming comp will be like completely full of it. There's no starting charge or crit stars on the CE unlike in previous events. So keep that in mind when making your farming teams. There are three command codes you could get and none of them really stand out to me, but you should still try picking them up at the shop when you can. We got the plush that I can never buy at a convention, the Nautilus, and everyone's Da Vinci Chan. Nothing really to note here, just remember to use the card with the Da Vinci command code first before popping MPs to make full use of the buff. Now we move on to what you actually care about, the There is a banner for the celebration, but there is no one new this time around. All the servants featured here should be some familiar old faces. But someone is getting new stuff. Skahawk is not only getting new animations, but she's also getting a skill upgrade. Her quick up will now not only charge MP by 20%, but also increase buff success rate by 20%. Why do you have that? Oh right, I forgot this little thing. All right. Better question, why do you still have that? Well, I'm assuming with this that they want you to combo the second skill into the first skill so that you can make the buff guarantee, but it makes the whole targetable part sort of redundant in that case. But forget about all that. The most important new thing is that she's getting a bunny suit, boys. Yeah! Yeah, and with that, there's nothing really much to talk about. I mean, what else is there? And then I'm forced into various death matches. Wait, what? The main highlight of this event is the introduction of Grailfront, 
This is a new game system that's gonna pop up in various events in the future, so try to get used to it now with this first iteration of it. Now there are a lot of details and numbers that are involved with this oh game mode. God, fuck that. So I'm gonna give you a rough idea so that you know what you're doing at the very least. So the basic idea is that this is a battle between you and your team of servants against another master and their team of servants. It takes place on this here, uh, game board. You and the opponent will take turns moving around the board and attacking each other. You win when you defeat all the enemy servants or defeat the master, but be careful because the same applies to you as well. The first turn is your setup turn, so summon your servants and equip your CEs. You're gonna see a bunch of slots where you can summon only one servant each, and the slot also indicates what class you can summon. You don't need to use up every slot, and considering the more limited team cost than normal, I recommend bringing the best that you got instead of trying to split your team cost evenly between servants. You have a set amount of energy per turn that you use to make moves, swap positions, and attack. Don't worry about wasting or saving your energy because it refills to the max at each turn. Each character, whether servant or master, has a certain amount of actions you can take in a turn. Your characters can take 3 action each and if you need help keeping track, there's a number on the top right of each icon. All servants, including your own, have 2 lives, so they need to be defeated twice in a fight before they are gone entirely. Masters, on the other hand, have 3 hit points, so if they are attacked 3 times, they're out for the count. Now when it comes to attacking, everyone has the ability to attack, it's just who they can attack that's different. Masters can only attack other masters, but servants can attack just about anyone. There are also spaces on the map that provide buffs to any servant that pass through it. Now here are two things to always remember when attacking. Positioning and initiation. Positioning determines who gets to participate in a fight. When you attack someone, your team will always be whoever's adjacent to the targeted enemy. For the enemy, their team is whoever is connected to your target. Now, the actual fighting aspect is something you're very used to, except the fight is going to be a set amount of turns and will not be a duel to the death. Each side gets one turn per servant on their side. So, if it's a 1v1, you would get one turn and they would get one turn. Now, here's something you're definitely not used to. The enemy can't go first. Oh no! Whoever started the attack gets to go first, so try to always be the initiator. Buffs, skill cooldowns, and crit stars stay with you after the battle and will follow you in future fights. Basically, if you pop your buffs in one fight, you will still have them in your next fight if they last more than one turn, and the skill will still be on cooldown. The crit stars that are generated are evenly split between the servants that participated in the fight, and immobilizing statuses are removed when the battle is over, but they still have a lingering effect on the board as it makes the affected servant lose an action. Finally, here's some random tips that you might find useful. First, team attacks aren't worth it. Trying to coordinate a team pincer attack on an enemy takes way too much energy and actions, so most of the time you will be doing 1v1s. So when you're deciding on who to bring for your team, don't bring full-on supports and instead bring self-sufficient servants who can dish out the damage by themselves. Second, if the enemy's at low health, try gaining more MP charge or crit stars. Remember, this stuff carries over between fights, so if they're gonna die anyway, might as well take advantage of it. Third, this guy. If you have a max bond, bring him. He's stupid good here like he is anywhere else. That's about most of the tips I have for today. This will be my first girlfriend as well. So if any of you experienced JP players have any tip, just share them below. It might help other first timers. That's about all I got for the video. There's nothing much else for Girlfront. Oh wait, I got a telegram. Commander, the enemy master is using a new servant we haven't seen in NA. Wait, what new servant?